talk about a case of cyber stalking and cyber harassment that has stuck with me since I first heard about it in 2019. There is a link in the episode description below to a podcast I just uploaded where I go into detail about this case and um, into detail about my a current case of cyber stalking and harassment that I'm currently investigating and dealing with. In 2019, social worker Francesca Rossi started getting messages um, from ex-boyfriends. Now she had just moved in with her boyfriend. She was happy. She didn't engage. It didn't respond to any of these messages. But then she gets a message from one of their current girlfriends. And attached to the message is a naked picture of Francesca. And now she realizes something's, something's not right. A few weeks later, she gets a call from her best friend. Her best friend had received a Facebook request from one of these ex-boyfriends. And the profile photo for the page was a naked picture of Francesca. Now, Francesca's a social worker. She doesn't have a lot of social media because, you know, for certain, for certain jobs, it's very difficult to maintain boundaries, you know, like teaching and psych, you know, a therapist, a, a, a social worker. It's difficult to maintain the, the needed boundaries if you have so social media or if you have any aspects of your personal life out there. So she doesn't have any of these social media pages. But the friend gets the page and she sends everything to Francesca. And even though her friend and her boyfriend, they're all very emotionally supportive, she knows she has to take action. So she goes to the lawyer and the lawyer um, is able to get the page taken down, but she investigates the ex-boyfriend. And she says, something's, no, this isn't, this isn't right. It doesn't, it doesn't fit the pattern. And what she means by that is, you know, it wasn't a recent breakup. This guy seems to have his life together. And there was nothing that put Francesca sort of in the public eye that would have triggered this. She's like, no, this is, this is weird. So she gets the page taken down and Francesca's like, great. But then things get worse. Now she's just being barraged with emails from ex-boyfriends. And one day she's home cooking and she gets a message from a lawyer saying she's being sued. The ex-wife of one of her ex-boyfriends is suing her because she claims she, she contracted an STD because her now ex-husband slept with Francesca. And Francesca's like, what is going on here? So she sends everything to her lawyer and a few days later, she gets a call from her lawyer at her job on a landline. And her lawyer says, you need to leave work right now. Do not tell anyone where you're going. Do not turn on your cell phone. Do not text anybody. You need to come here right now. So Francesca makes an excuse. She leaves, she goes to the conference room of the law firm. And on this table is all sorts of documents and photos and whatnot. And the lawyer points at one of the photos and asks Francesca, do you know this person? And Francesca says, yeah, I do. Now I'm not going to tell you who it is. I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away the twist. But in any case, once this person is confronted, that's when things start to escalate. And pretty soon Francesca is being investigated by the FBI and the, and the police. Pretty soon, Francesca's boss receives a call from somebody saying that Francesca's having inappropriate relationships with her patients. A local precinct gets a tip saying that Francesca was threatening to shoot up the precinct. And every time these, these tips, these calls would come in, Francesca would have to present this file folder full of information from her case and explain, it's this person. This is who's behind all of this. When a tip gets called into a precinct claiming that Francesca was threatening to bomb a synagogue, police start to take notice. And that's when they start to really look closer and investigate. And they finally find who's behind the harassment. And the reason why this person was able to elude police for so long is because they had 25 different devices. And what's so scary about that is, first of all, this was no hacker. This wasn't some cyber expert. This was just some nobody, some regular person that was able to keep this up for so long. And when you think about how many devices the average person has, you realize that it's very easy for people to get away with this kind of crime. And they know it, which is why they do it. They know that they know that the laws haven't really caught up. They know that it's very hard to prove this, especially on social media, because you have to subpoena for IP addresses and it's just, it's a mess. So 
in cases like this, it, it, it can sometimes take a very long time for it to be proven, for the person to be, the, the harasser to be brought to justice. And I'm just hoping that laws will start catching up sooner than later. Now, I'm currently involved in a, in a situation like this. And I go, into, I go into way more detail in the podcast episode that I've linked in the description. But <clears throat> it's not as high profile as Francesca. It's not as dangerous, but it's, it's still as unsettling. Uh, I was involved in a true crime discord uh, that was run by someone named Cindy, not her real name. And uh, one night I was brought into sort of this call with a bunch of true crime creators. And they all told me that, you know, I needed to be really careful with Cindy, that I, um, that, that she just was kind of sketchy and, you know, to pay close attention and, and not get sort of sucked in. So with this in mind, I start paying closer attention to Cindy in this discord. Now, Cindy and I, we were friends with a fairly well-known TikTok creator in the true crime community. We'll call her Kelly. And um, one day, this parody account pops up, and it's poking fun at people in the true crime community. And we all assumed that Cindy was behind it because she was she would admit to making troll pages. But then one day, um, Kelly's kids were posted to this parody page with these really menacing songs behind them. You know, the pictures were ones that Kelly had already posted, but they were reposted to this page. And, you know, these songs really were very ominous and, you know, were, were very scary, I'm sure, for any parent to have to see. And remembering what I had been told in this meeting with the other creators and, and knowing I had thought all along, like we, a lot of us, had assumed Cindy was behind this page because it, the, the page she took aim or the somebody on the page, one of the posts took aim at somebody we knew Cindy didn't like. So we just assumed it was her. So with that in mind and with what these true crime creators had said to me in mind, I went to Kelly and I said, listen, I think Cindy's behind this. And Kelly said, you know, she did send me a screenshot of one of the posts and the timestamp on the screenshot was like 33 seconds after it had been uploaded. And, and we just, we, none of us understood how she was able to get it that quickly. Now, at this point, a number of us in this discord starting to started to have their suspicions about Cindy and we made another discord and we sort of took everything we were finding, all the other screenshots of all these pages, these troll pages that were cropping up with creators, children on them and really just sort of menacing stuff. And, you know, we started to, sort of put together a timeline and, and just try to look for patterns. And, and we found one. While we were investigating, Kelly and Cindy were becoming very close friends. And we'd notice that um, Kelly's other friendships started to suffer and, and, and dissolve. So Cindy sort of moved in and became sort of the co-host of Kelly's TikTok lives. And we noticed that when Kelly would go live with somebody other than Cindy, Cindy would get irritated. You know, we'd say, hey, Kelly went live with so-and-so the night before. Oh, she went live with so-and-so? Interesting. And then another page with her Kelly's kids would pop up. Um, a week later, Kelly went live with the same creator, and the next day, another page popped up. This time, it was with... Um, videos that were making fun of Kelly and this other creator. It finally gets to the point where we confront Cindy about it. She begins this smear campaign and now um, it, where she just makes up lies about those of us who confronted her and she just continuously sort of hammers away at our mental health by doxing one of us, making fun of my eating disorder, all these different things. Now in my stories I'm gonna post a video that I did where I, I explain why we think Cindy is behind, you know, one of these troll pages. And um, what I noticed is, you know, once we confronted her, things started to escalate. And very, which was very similar to Francesca. Once Francesca confronted the person that was behind it, that's when all this stuff started to happen in her life. And she started to be accused of all this stuff. And that's what Cindy's doing. And I had to go to the police multiple times with screen recordings and printouts and and I constantly had to explain what was going on. And I finally got a report made 
and the violation was harassment. And I went back another time with a hundred printouts of screenshots because Cindy and the remaining members of her discord, um, now are just consistently, persistently harassing us. And so I had to go to the police and I had to say, this is what's going on. And they upgraded the violation to aggravated harassment. Now it's hard enough to be taken seriously as a woman when you go to into police, go into a precinct to complain about something like this to get it. So imagine what I had to present for this to be upgraded. Police think that if, if they can't see the damage that's being done to somebody, you know, but if, if these threats aren't resulting in, in something visible, like a visible injury, that it's not real. And it's very real. This, this sort of crime is becoming more and more prevalent, especially because of social media, especially because of all these different devices that we have. And uh, it's unfortunate that, um, the laws really haven't caught up and I'm, I'm hoping that thing that that changes, but for now, I don't know that I have much hope. I typically don't share a lot about what's going on in my personal life just cause I think, uh, people don't care, <laughs> but, um, thanks for listening. If you've ever had a situation like this, I'd be interested to hear about it in the comments. And, uh, I'm also going to put a link to the podcast. I think you should listen to it. I want to, I want to know what people think of the twist. Leave your thoughts in the comments.